Okay, so I was asked by one of the students to go over how you find and simplify uh, answers for trig problems. So we're going to look at the six different trig functions, how to find them using the unit circle, and how to simplify them. So the first and easiest one to find is going to be cosine of theta. So we're going to do the cosine of pi over 3. So when you do the cosine of pi over 3, you want to first find pi over 3. So we find this line, pi over 3, okay? And this is going to make our reference triangle here. So we have our cosine is going to be the x, and our sine is going to be the y coordinate, roughly. So what we have to do is now find which one is cosine. So we know that we have these two coordinates here, um, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Um, the first coordinate point here is going to be cosine. So it says a half. So we have our cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. That's that. So our next one, we could do the sine of pi over 3. So once again, you go to the angle, which is pi over 3. You go to that point. You find the second coordinate, which the second coordinate is going to be sine, and then you write that. Um, in exact terms, the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Now this can't be simplified anymore. Um, we, have this, we have a square root on top. We have a uh, simplified denominator. Everything's good there. So we can leave those answers um, there. Now tangent, to find tangent of a number like pi over 3, we need to know the sine and the cosine. So what you need to do if you're if you're given a problem that says tangent pi over three, you go to pi over three on your circle, okay, then it's going to be sine over cosine or y over x, depending on how you want to look at it. So we, we're going to do the square root of three divided by two all over one half. So you take the numbers that you already know from the unit circle, which is cosine and sine, and you're going to put sine on the top and cosine on the bottom. So <clears throat> At this point, we have a um, quotient made up of two other quotients. So we have a fraction divided by another fraction. Um, the best way to solve a, a problem like this um, is what you're going to do is you're going to take the denominator, which is 1 half, and you're going to flip it. So 1 half will become 2 over 1, and then you're going to multiply that number times the numerator. So when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the same fraction. So in this case, you're going to get the square root of 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 1. So this is the case for any time you divide by a fraction, you can just multiply by the reciprocal, and you're accomplishing the same thing. So in this case, we're going to be left with, um, after we take out the 2s because they're going to cancel each other out, you should be left with the square root of 3 over 1, which is just the square root of 3. Now, this is completely simplified. Um, we don't want to do anything else with this. Um, this would be the answer, the exact answer I'm looking for on a test. Okay, so those are more of the simple ones. Now, when we get into the, um, the other functions, when we get into secant, cosecant, and cotangent, um, we basically just have to um, take one and divide our... Um, R1 by each of these three functions. Um, so we're going to be finding the reciprocal values of these. So if we do the cosine of pi over 3, um, excuse me, if we do the secant of pi over 3, um, we know that that is the same as 1 over the cosine of pi over 3. Okay? So we're, get, we're left with that information. So we know that the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. So we get 1 divided by 1 over 2. Which if you remember the method that I used to solve, we're just going to do 1 multiplied by our denominator flip 2 over 1, which is just going to give us 2. Okay. So this is perfectly simplified again. 2 is, two is fine as an answer. Um, now the cosecant of pi over 3 is going to involve a an extra step because we're going to have to simplify it eventually, and you'll see why. 
So this is the same as 1 over the sine of pi over 3, which when we look up here, our sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So this time we're left with 1 over the square root of 3 divided by 2. So now we have um, a fraction with a square root in it. So this is going to require a little bit of additional work. Um, remember, we take my step again where we're going to take the numerator and we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is going to be 2 over the square root of 3. So we're just left with 2 over the square root of 3. Now, this answer is not acceptable because um, there's a square root in the denominator. Um, we want to get rid of that. Now, the way that we have to get rid of that is to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, the reason why we can do this is because the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is just 1. So multiplying any number by 1 results in zero change from that original number. So it's going to serve our purpose of getting rid of the square root of 3 in the denominator because when you multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, you're just left with 3. Okay? So it's going to serve to get rid of that, um, and we're not changing our problem. So we should get the 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. Now that's an exact answer there. So this is as simplified as you get. Um, this is probably this is one of the um, the stranger looking answers that you'll see. Um, but remember, because we're dealing with um, finding points on the outside of a circle, um, we're going to have to deal with square root signs. Um, the last one that I'd like to do is the tang or the cotangent of uh, pi over three. And the cotangent of pi over 3 is just the inverse of this number over here. So um, I, can, I can, if I know my answer, if I know my tangent, I can just do the inverse of that. But um, what I'd like you to do is think of it in terms of sine and cosine. So this one is going to be the cosine of pi over 3 over the sine of pi over 3. Okay? So in this case, we should just get 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2. So we're dividing by the square root of 3 over 2 again, which is going to give us um, another interesting result. So we take our numerator, and we multiply it by the um, reciprocal of our denominator, which is going to be 2 over the square root of 3. Now our 2's are going to cancel, so we're going to get 1 over the square root of 3. Now I remember how I, this is not an acceptable answer again because we're dividing by a square root. So we just multiply by whatever the denominator, denominator is over the denominator, and we should be left with the square root of 3 over 3. So this is a perfectly simplified number um, that is acceptable any time for an exact answer. So when you get to this point here where you're dividing by a fraction, um, make sure that you flip that fraction, multiply by your numerator, and if you're left with the square root on the denominator, multiply by whatever that number is over the same number. So multiply by 1, but we want it in a different form. We want it in the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And that's going to um, give us, eventually, the square root of 3 over 3. So this is um, how you're going to find sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent in simplified form. Now these problems are going to be um, on our exam and it's going to be on our uh, unit circle quiz next week so make sure to brush up and uh, make sure you know these six functions and how to find them. Um, once again these all relate back to our unit circle. Um, our unit circle has sine and cosine for all of these angles and as you can see um, that's all you have to know to find any of these six, six functions here, um, at least at those points in the unit circle. So please go over this. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask during class or send me an email. Um, but make sure you study up your unit circle, and um, I'll see you next time.